everyone and welcome back! Now that we know what a JSON Web Token is and how to use it, let's take the concept and apply it here to the user session management of our application. Our server is going to be completely stateless this time, we don't have here the session store. Let's start with the functionality for signing up a new user. So we are going to go here to the server, to the create user route. Here at the level of the security utils file, we have already imported here the private key file and the public key. This is a RSA public and private key pair. You can generate this with online tools, for example, or if you install OpenSSL. There is nothing specific to these keys so that they could only be used for signing JSON web tokens. These are generic RSA keys. If you want to use your own keys, I suggest that you use this website here, or if you simply look for online RSA key generator, any of the generators will work well. For your production application, it's better to use a key size of 248, hit generate new keys, and you have here a pair of private keys. It's not recommended to use these keys in production. Instead, it's better to generate the keys locally in your machine using a command line tool such as, for example, OpenSSL. It's very important not to take keys from public internet services. This is just for test purposes. Let's then take these public and private key pairs and we're going to use this to implement our user authentication services. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a JSON web token with a given expiration and then we're going to store it here at the level of the session ID cookie. We often hear about JWTs as an alternative to cookies, but here we can see that a cookie is just a storage mechanism. There is nothing that prevents us from storing a JWT in a cookie. It's actually a good place to store it if we are getting all our web tokens from the same domain, as we will see. So we can store it in a domain-specific cookie. We are going to make it HTTP only and secure. So the bear token, which is a JWT, it's going to be invulnerable to cross-site scripting attacks. Even if someone manages to inject JavaScript in our application, they would still not be able to steal the JSON web token, which represents the user session. We are going to come back later in this course to this mix between cookies and JSON web tokens. Right now, let's replace this to do here with our implementation. We are going to create here a new function and we are going to call it create session token. The only argument that we need to pass to this function that we are about to define is the user ID. So this function is going to create a JSON web token that is going to be assigned here to our session token. Let's implement it here at the level of the security utils file. We're going to export a function. We're going to call it create session token. It's going to take one argument, which is the user ID. Now let's see how we are going to create the JSON web token. We're going to be using the same library that we were using before. If you want to learn more about this library, this is a off zero MIT licensed library called node JSON web token. So you have here on GitHub the documentation for the library in case you need it. We're going to be using it here to generate the JSON web token. We are going to do jwt.sign. So it's the same API that we were using before because we are not going to be needing any specific attribute other than the subject. Uh, let's pass it in, for example, an empty payload. We are going to pass as the second argument the private key needed for signing new JSON web tokens. And the third argument is going to be an options object. The first option that we will be using is the algorithm. So if we don't pass in an algorithm, then instead of using RS-256, which takes two keys, public and private, we would have accidentally be using AGS-256. And this would not work. So the correct algorithm is RS-256. We are going to expire the JSON web token using the expires in property. We are going to define here this session duration, which is a comfortable session duration so that the token does not expire all the time, but you will still be able to test the expiration functionality in our application without waiting too long. 
In production, again, this would depend on your application. We are also going to pass in here the subject, because we will only be using this JSON Web Token for authentication. So let's use as subject the user ID, and we would get back here a JSON Web Token. The problem is that this call would be synchronous, so we don't want to block the whole Node.js process as we are generating a new JSON Web Token. According to the documentation, this sign API call has an asynchronous version where we pass in here as the last argument a callback, a node style callback. So let's also promisify here this particular function. We're going to call it simply sign JWT and we are also going to be calling util promisify. We will be passing it in jwt.sign and this will effectively promisify this API call. So now we are going to be using here this promisified version. We are going to return this here. So we are now returning a promise. This has not been evaluated. We are going to mark this function as a sync, meaning that it returns a promise and it's compatible with a sync await. So because we are returning here a promise, we don't need to await for the result. Here we are going to import the session token with alt enter. We have now run here into a problem. This ID is a number and it's not a string. So we are going to call to string on it because at this point in the program, we are sure that we have here a number. And instead of taking back here the promise, we are going to await for the resolution of the promise. So now what we have here is a JSON web token that will then be stored in the session cookie and sent to the browser. The browser then with each request back is going to send back again the same JSON web token. And in order to validate it, we simply need to check its signature. Let's then see this functionality in action. We are going to switch over to a bigger browser window so that we can see what is going on. We're going to create here a new user. And now when we click sign up, let's keep an eye here on the network tab on the Ajax filter. We hit sign up. We got here a first request sign up. Then we were redirected to lessons. But the first request is an HTTP post to the sign up API. We're going to be returning 200 and have a look here. The session ID. This is a JSON web token now. So if we switch over here to the application tab, to the cookies, we can now see that as the session cookie, we are storing a JSON web token. It's HTTP only. We still can't access it via JavaScript. It's secure, meaning that it will only be sent via HTTPS. And it's not simply a random value that the server had to store in memory. The server has at this moment completely discarded the value. Even though the server did not keep the token in memory, it will still be able to identify the user. We are going to see how in the next lesson.